All right, welcome back everyone watching on YouTube here in um, the Zoom watching as well. So today, this is gonna be the, the fourth tutorial that we're doing um, you know, on the, the Michigan Football Analytics Society uh, YouTube account. So this is really the last tutorial that I'm going to do in R. You know, from now on, it'll be Python for, for next semester since this is the last one of this semester. But, you know, for anyone that doesn't, um, that doesn't like have the tutorials like in, in code form, again, you can come to my GitHub, which is like github.com slash Tate Seth, or just search up my name or something. And like, if you click on NFL tutorials 2022, you can see like all my code that like I have here. So like, this is the tutorial that we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be building a random forest and an XG boost. Last uh, tutorial, we did linear regression and logistic regression. So this is kind of taking what we did last time where you just assign coefficients to each variable and have an intercept to kind of like the next level where we're building a bunch of tree-based models. So I'm not gonna get into like the math behind like how um, these models kind of work, but I will like, you know, show, you know, how to how to make these models. So yeah, if you, if you wanna follow along because you're more of a visual learner, feel free to use the, the uh, here. But if not, yeah, you can you can follow this this YouTube video and and we can kind of get started. So, like okay, again, the first thing that we want to do every time we start is open up a new uh, you know R Studio kind of like script. So again, for like those who kind of forgot how to do that or something, you click the plus sign here and you click R script. Um, and so then you know we're gonna load in our tidyverse package, so library tidyverse and run that. We're gonna load in our NFL Fast R package. And you should already have these download. GG themes we can also load in, which you should have downloaded from the last one. And then our Ranger package from uh, the last tutorial that we installed there. And, th and then the uh, VIP package that we also installed last tutorial as well. So those should all work for you. Some new packages that you might have not used if you've just been following along these tutorials is the carrot package, uh, the XG boost package. So if you do install that packages and then carrot like this, you can install this new package. I'm not gonna run this line because I already have this package, but you're gonna wanna do that for both uh, carrot and XG boost. So if you, if you do both of those, you should be able to get these packages. And these will help us with a lot of the machine learning um, principles that we want to do in this tutorial so those will be good um so i get once you install those you can come up and you can load in carrot and you can load in xg boost and so to know that it's installed like if you type in library and like the package pops up then you'll you'll have a good good feeling about that um and then another thing is like when you look at data sometimes it'll show up in scientific notation uh which like i tried to avoid at all costs. So I usually do options, uh, sci pen, which is like the scientific pen equals 9999. And so that will make sure it doesn't uh, be in scientific notation. So once you have your packages load in, you know, the, the seven packages today, you, you can do this option, sci pen if you want, you can load in the play-by-play -play data. So we're gonna load in play-by-play -play data from 2015 to 2022 today. Um, you know, if you've kept the same, kind of our studio uh, directory, like the play-by-play -play data will probably already be loaded in. It's it's only a matter of if you want to update it. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a random forest on making a prediction on whether or not a field goal will be made. So we're going to assign a probability that a field goal will be made um, based on a bunch of different variables. And then the second thing we'll be doing is we'll be doing, we'll be making an XG boost model, an extreme gradient boosting model um, where we'll be making a rushing yards over expected metric. So it's basically uh, how I designed my original rushing yards over expected. I'll, I'll kind of go through that. So, you know, these are two like high end modeling techniques that if you're able to get really good at them, they can lead to a lot of really cool predictions, cool player metrics, all that type of stuff. So now that the play by play data is loaded in, we should, um, so we should kind of see if, we, we kind of got to figure out which variables we want to include in this uh, uh, field goal model. So 
We need to see, all right, on plays with no field goal attempt, or when there is a field goal attempt, when it's marked as NA, let's see when uh, field goal attempts happen. So this is just a simple command, um, just to like get us oriented with the data. So we're just gonna filter out the down and when, when there's no down listed or when there's no you know zero or one to indicate field goal attempt or not, we're gonna group by down and then we're gonna summarize field goal attempts equals the sum of field goal attempt. So when we run that, okay, so we can see that some field goals do happen on first, second, and third down, but the majority happen on fourth down. So down might be something that we should include in this data set. So when we design our field goals data set, we can take field goals, let's, let's call it a new data set, put our arrow, and then take our play-by-play -play data set, make our pipe. So we're doing, we're, we're gonna do something to the, from the play-by-play -play data set to the field goal data set. We're gonna filter field goal attempt equals equals one. We're going to mutate um, and make a field goal made column. So right now, uh, NFL Fast R has field goal result listed as, oops, field goal result listed as either made or miss, um, which is a, a string, but we need to make this an indicator variable. So if we do our if else statement, we say, all right, if field goal result what equals equals made, then we put a one for if it was made, and then we put a zero for if it was not made. And then now we can, oops, now we can select our, the variables we want to uh, kind of design this with. So the yard line is probably gonna be our most important variable. Uh, we wanna get something based on, you know, how many seconds are remaining in the half. We wanna get a score differential. And then we should also take the, the roof type, the surface type, the temperature, the wind, um, whether the field goal was made, which is the variable we created up here with our mutate. And then we should we also need to take the kicker player name so that we can get results later on. So we run that and you know we can come over here to, in our environment and look at kind of what we have for field goals. So we have a yard line, half seconds remaining, what the score differential was, whether it was outdoors or not, whether it was graph, grass or turf, um, temperature, wind, field goal was made or not, and then the kicker's player name. So it's exactly what we need in our data set. So now let's check, um, let's check uh, which, which columns have NA. So we do call sums, parentheses, is that NA, another parentheses, put the data set in there, and then have our closing parentheses. Run that, and we can see, all right, so there's 7,871 field goals in the data set. Uh, temperature is missed, missing on 3,052 of them, and wind is missing on 3,352 of them. So, and roof is missing on 91 of them. So 91 is a small enough number to be missing where we can kind of take that out, but we're gonna have to decide what to do with the missing values for temperature and wind. Maybe we don't include those variables in our model. Maybe we replace them with the average value or the median value. That's something that's up to our discretion and kind of um, you know involves some some creativity in the modeling process. But from a roof perspective, that's enough where it's probably just a data issue where we can just remove it. So we can do field goals, arrow into field goals. So we're just going back into the same data set that we have. And we're going to remove the roof type. Now we can see we, you know, we lost some um, data, which is fine because we still have a lot to work with. Now we can see that there's zero NAs in the roof. So that's good. Now we need to figure out where is the NAs for temperature coming from. So if we do field goals, filter, and this time we, usually when we do this NA, we put the exclamation point because we don't want the NAs. This time we do want to see where the NAs is coming from. So we do is that NA of temperature on field goal. Let's group by roof to see which roof type maybe uh, is affecting this, um, this temperature. And let's tally. 
So we can see that it's a bunch of different roof types that have NAs for uh, temperature. And so that doesn't really, you know, do us much help in, in the grand scheme of things. Um, so, you know, just, just for this uh, kind of analysis, we'll probably just set it to room temperature, 68 degrees, you know, um, there's, there's more advanced ways of dealing with NAs that I won't get into in this video, but, you know, we can kind of just set it at um, 70, let's say uh, 68 uh, when we get on later. But first we need to check um, where the, uh, where the NAs are coming from for the, um, for the wind. So if we summarize and we get median wind here, we can see that the only NAs that kind of pop up for the wind are, you know, when there's open dome or closed. So this makes sense. There shouldn't be any wind in these stadiums, but like the, it does get the wind for outdoors. So we can assume that every wind NA has a, uh, a an NA in it that should be zero. So we can convert all of those to zero. For temperature, we can just set that to room temperature. Um, You know, we probably shouldn't be doing that uh, in, in the grand scheme of things, if we were to build like the most accurate model in the world, but this will just kind of help us uh, get like a feeling for how this works. So how we can approach a, uh, replacing NA. So we do field goals. We're gonna do our dollar sign to access our variables. And we're gonna do dollar sign temp. Then we're gonna do a bracket is dot NA. So we're gonna say, all right, fill in this, fill in these with the, same thing that we did out here. Field goals temp, field goals dollar sign temp, field goals dollar sign temp. When it's NA, what do we want to do with it? So we're just we're just extracting the NAs, which is what the brackets are for. When it, when it's NA, we just want to replace it with 68. So we run that. And then when with wind, we want to replace those with zero. So we do the same, basically the same code as above except temp is replaced with wind here, place it with zero. Cool. Now we need to check, before we start modeling, we need to make sure the factors in our data set, so the things that aren't numeric, like roof and surface, we need to make sure those are accurately listed as factors so that they can be one hot encoded. So we do STR to check um, what the data type is. Yard line 100 is a number that makes sense. Roof is a factor. We can see character, surface character. So that looks that looks really good. Uh, the only thing that is a factor that um, that we're gonna have to account for later is field goal made, but we can do that in the random forest when we build it. Right now, this is a numeric um, one or zero, but we can see that. Um, you know, this this is a factor. It's like a one or a zero. We don't want to treat it like a numeric variable where it's like one, two, zero. It's either a binary one or zero. So let's build the random forest. So field, goal, RF. Um, and then this is where a ran the random forest package will come into play. So, you know, you can either do random forest like this, um, where, you know, it should be loaded in from this ranger package that we did, or you could use the random forest package and access it this way. I like to use the ranger or the ranger package. So I'm gonna just type in random forest. And then here's what I was talking about with the factor. So we do as that factor, field goal made. So this is, what, this is the response. This is what we're predicting. We're predicting the binary one or zero field goal made or not. We're gonna do our little uh, Enye or squiggly or whatever this is called to get to the variables that we want to predict the response with. So for us, it's yard line 100. It's half seconds remaining. Score differential. Um, roof, surface, temp, and wind. And then data equals field goals. So we do response, NA, our formula, which is all the variables we want to predict our response, and then where our data is coming from.
And so, oh, wait, did I not load the ranger package? Um, oh, maybe I should use the random forest. So if you use uh, random forest dot dot or the colon colon random forest, this will build your field goal RF for you. So we can just we can just check the random forest from the back. Like it, it just built a hundred decision trees, right? Or sorry, 500 decision trees. So if you just have a very simple decision tree, it just built 500 you know, versions of these and then we'll average all the predictions together to get a one or a zero for if the field goal was made or not. And we can see here from our confusion matrix in the bottom left, would we predict no field goal to be made, which is this zero, it is actually no field goal made 106 times in, out of our data set. But what happens is field goals are made so often and misses are usually flukes that there's 1,113 times where we predict the field goal to be made and then it ends up getting missed. So that's why we have a 91% class error rate here. But down here, like since field goal rates are made so often or field goal rates are so high, 6,446 times we predicted the field goal to be made and it actually was made. And then there are a couple of times where we predicted it to be missed and it was made. Uh, you know, if you think about the Justin Tucker uh, game winning field goal a couple of years ago was probably one we would have predict miss, but it ended up being made. So now we can kind of see the, the variable importance of this. Like, how are we getting to these predictions here? Because when you have a tree based model, there's no coefficients assigned to each variable, like in our logistic regression model that we created last weekend it could be different depending on the different decision trees that it makes. So we need to see which variables are affecting these predictions. So we can see that yard line 100 is the most important, which makes sense. Uh, you know, yard line should be pretty big. Half seconds remaining also makes sense. You know, it's a lot tougher to kick at the end of games. Score differential, you know, that checks out, you know, maybe Kickers are having some desperation kicks or different stuff like that. Temperature, wind, surface, roof. So this, this kind of checks out. So that, that's good to see. And now we can make predictions with this random forest that we did. So usually when, when we get to our actually boost model, you're going to want to create a training and a testing data set, uh, a training set where you, you know, you have like, let's say 75% of the data and you train your model based off that 75% and you test it on the 25% remaining. But with this, the random forest that R has does uh, out of or out of box uh, estimate of, of error rate, right? So what it does is it will make its predictions kind of using something similar to cross-validation where it doesn't, uh, it's not overfitting on the data. So when it makes its predictions, um, you know, it's it's having like these these out of uh, the data set um, kind of like estimates. So to make our um, to get our predictions, what we can do is we can do FG preds, and we can do predict field goal RF, and then we have to do type equals prob. And so what type equals prob does is it'll make all our predictions on a scale from zero to one. Type equals response means that we're predicting a numeric variable. So, um, you know, it could, it could literally be anything. But type equals prob means we're going to make all our predictions on a scale of zero to one. And so we can, we can open up our predictions. We can see, all right, so this one column right here means the chance of, you know, predicting a, a field goal. For this first kick, it was 76%. For the second kick, it was 72.5% and so on. But this doesn't do anything for us because we need to join it to the original data set so that we can get kicker's names. So what we can do for that is FG preds joined. And we can use C bind, right? Column bind, where we do field goals, which was our original data set with the kicker player name, and then FG preds. And then now let's just check the leaderboard before we go on to our actually boost model. So actually, um, let me open this just so people know what it looks like. Field goal preds joined. We have all our data. And then we have the chance that they would make the kick 
or not, and then whether or not they made the kick. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take this field goal made column, and we're going to want to subtract the chance of them making the field goal, which is this one, because we were predicting a one or a zero, so it tells us the chance of one or zero. When you do a, a multi-class, this was just a binary class, like a, you know, only, only two things could happen on field goals. When you do a multi-class prediction, then you'll have all these different probabilities. So that, that'll help if you were to, let's say, predict whether there'd be a sack, interception, complete pass, or incomplete pass on a play or something like that. So when we create our, our uh, now that we've created our join data set, we can do mutate FGOE, which is field goal over expected, field goal made minus one. But we can't just do one because that's the numeric one. We have to do um, this, uh, the kind of like the uh, backwards apostrophe and then one to access the data set there. Let's group by uh, kicker player name. Let's summarize on kicks over expected made. So let's see who the best kickers were. And then field goals over expected, take the sum of that. And let's arrange on kicks over expected made. Run all of that, we should see, okay. So <laughs> Justin Tucker, uh, 23 field goals over expected made since 2015. Harrison Butker, 9.6, makes sense. Graham Gano, Boswell, um, Prater, cool. That looks good. So again, um, to like kind of summarize the random forest, we replaced our NAs in the data set. We built our random forest using the random forest package, uh, made this a factor, um, and then had our formula. Then we did type equals prob to get our probabilities, joined that together, and then did FG preds join on that to get um, to get like our, our our kicker leaderboard. And then you know if you wanted to do if you wanted the worst kickers, you could take the minus sign away on uh, that, and then you can kind of get you know Zane Gonzalez, Rosas, all that. But you know we want to look at the best kickers, so and Justin Tucker's on top, so we probably did something right. So that's kind of how to build a random forest. Uh, this was using, you know, a binary one or zero variable. We can also, you know, do it, uh, you know, if we were to predict something uh, numeric, you know, we, we could have gone on a little bit different process, but this was kind of how to do that. Okay. So now we're going to move on to ex uh, extreme gradient boosting or XG boost models, which is just random forest on steroids. So, um, so let's, let's get into that. So we're going to do it based off rushing yards over expected, um, or ex we're going to build an expected rushing yards model, basically based on game situation. So we're going to take our, we, we just want rush attempts, right? So you're going to want to take our play by play data, do our pipe. Or we're going to say, right, all right, we just want rush attempts to build our rushing yards over expected. But we don't want QB scrambles because that could throw off the model. Those aren't design rushes. We don't want QB dropbacks, uh, you know, that you know maybe have been misclassified as rush attempts. And then since we want to predict how many yards are gained, we can't have uh, NA on yards gain because that's the response variable. So we run that and we can see on our right here, we went from 370,000 to 110,000 or 102,000. So that's good there. So we're going to want to take, you know, similar variables like yard line, uh, down yards to go, whether they're in shotgun, all that stuff. But we should also count for the defensive strength that the team is running against. So we're going to take def yards per carry. So defensive yards per carry. And we're gonna want to take our rush attempts. And we're gonna wanna say, all right, let's get how good each run defense was on the season. So filter out any times where the, the defensive team isn't listed. And then let's group by def team and season. And just summarize the defensive uh, yards per carry that they've been having this season, right? So. You know, we, we've done this in a couple of tutorials now. 
just filter out the, the bad data group by defense and season, and then we can open it up just to see what it looks like. All right, 2019 Jets, that was a good run defense. That makes sense. Uh, 2022 Chargers, historically bad run defense. That makes sense. So, you know, these, these uh, this kind of checks out. So we can join that back in to our rush attempts uh, data frame that we have just, just for on, on each uh, defender, right? So we'll do def yards per carry and we'll do by def team and season. So again, we make our defensive yards per carry column. We use our left join and we join it back. So now let's just select the columns that we're gonna need for the rest of this analysis. So we're gonna call this rushing data join. And why this is called join is because this is gonna be used later on to join, to make sure we have rusher player name, but rusher player name can't go into the model. So we're gonna to have to create two different data sets, one kind of small one, and then one smaller one. So let's take our rush attempts. Let's do select. And the first thing we have to do is select our yards gained. But we're gonna call that label here because we want to we want to show that we're labeling yard gain as the response. Let's take yard line 100. Let's take the quarter the quarter seconds remaining, um, half seconds remaining, uh, quarter the actual quarter that we're in, the down the yards to go. Shotgun whether they're in shotgun or not, you know, it might be harder to run out of shotgun. Whether there's no huddle or not, it might be harder to run out of no huddle. The expected points on the play could help. The win probability on the play could help, um, you know, kind of like get some of the, the box numbers and stuff that, that players have. Then we want the defensive yards per carry. Rusher player name. And then let's also get the post team and the def team. So the possession team and the defensive team. Um, and we're also going to want to filter and make sure that there's no times where the label, which is yards gained, has an NA. And also no times that down has an NA since that'll be a factor in our thing. So on rushing data join, we have one, 102,000 um, still. So now we just wanna create a separate data set called rushes, which is what we're gonna use to model where we deselect these last three here. But we have to put minus signs in front of them to deselect them. Because we can't put these uh, variables into the model because it will overfit on the results knowing if it knows like who the running back is. And it'll just be too wide of a data set for each running back to get their own individual column. So that's how we take that out uh, you know, before we train. Again, let's let's use our STR to see whether or not there was uh, any factors or not. And there is, right? So like down is a factor. Like you shouldn't treat uh, first down, second down, third down as one apart. They're each, it's their own different thing. So they should be treated differently. Um, you know, sh shotgun or a no huddle are also factors. Like there's no progression from one to zero with stuff in between, or, you know, maybe it goes to two. It's just either... Oh, zero 0 or a 1, so we need to treat those as factors as well. So how do we convert numeric columns to factors? We do rushes, and let's start with down. As dot factor, rushes down. So it's saying, all right, take this column and put the exact same data that we already have, but it's wrapped in a factor. We can do the same thing with shotgun. we can do the same thing with no huddle. So now if we were to rerun this up here, we can see that they're now factors, uh, you know, factor with four levels for down, shotgun has two factors uh, and no huddle has two factors. So now what we're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to do this something called one hot encoding. So basically what this does is each, this data set rushes, has these factors like down 
and shotgun and no huddle that need to become their own columns that indicate whether or not they're uh, each other. So what we can do for that is this is a machine learning technique that you can also use for categorical variables. Like when we had roof for temperature, when we're creating XG boost model, we'd want to one hot encode these and make sure that they each have their own column. So we're gonna do the same thing here. So, so let's just call this uh, like dummy. And so basically we're gonna take dummy bars, which is from the carrot package. So if you did install the carrot package, uh, make sure you do that for this. And then we're gonna wanna say, all right, um, like just like take the whole thing. So that's what the squiggly is. Take every single thing, data equals rushes. So this will just create a list of like kind of what we have to do. This doesn't matter too much. The next step is what's important. So we're gonna create our data set called rushing model data. We're gonna wanna take a data frame that basically predicts the one hot encoding formula on the rushes data. So it's not actually making any predictions. Basically all it's doing is this, this is kind of a way to do one hot encoding. So if you remember our rushes, it has down as, you know, it's one individual column. If we were to open rush, rushing model data, which has the same amount of rows, it's gonna have multiple columns now, down dot one, down dot two, down dot three, down dot four. And this has a one or zero indicator, depending on, you know, whether or not it's at down. So I mentioned this in the random forest. This is where we actually have to do a uh, training and testing set. So we do sample size and we're gonna wanna take, so basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna say, I right, let's, let's just do a 50-50 split. So you could hard code this in and just do 1,000 uh, or 102,192 uh, divided by 50. But like if we, if our data set changes, this will make sure that we don't do this. Let's take the amount of rows in this. So we can see our sample size is, you know, 51,000 either way. Usually you're going to want to do a 80-20 uh, split for training and testing or a 75-25 split. But we're just doing 50-50 here today just because we're getting our feet wet. Then also set your seed to um to, to something that's so that you can make sure your results are reproducible. If not, it'll set a random seed every time, and you'll be getting different results on past data that's already happened if you rerun this model multiple times. So I'll usually just pick a year that Lions made the playoffs. There's not many of them, so um I, I run out of seeds eventually, but you know, it's just easy to remember, something easy to put in. You could do like freaking one, two, three, four if you want, like it doesn't really matter. Um, so now we're going to have to create our indices, right? So we're going to want to kind of create uh, like which which rows are going to be um, in our train data and which rows are going to be in our test data. So we're going to use the sample, which is part of base R. We're going to say, all right, let's sequence along our data set. This is how many rows that we're going to sequence for. We're going to say, all right, the size is going to be the sample size, right? So when we run this, we can see it picks out. So it's going to pick out a bunch of random rows uh, that, that are 50% of the data set that it should um, take to make the train data and the test data. So to make our train data, as that matrix, actually boost you work with matrix matrices, rushing model data, do our brackets and put our in, right? So if we wanted certain columns, we'd put it here, but we want certain rows. So this is a list of rows that we need to take from here. For the test data set, we do the, we do basically the same thing, except this time we put a negative sign in front of in. So this is a, don't take that, those rows, take every row, but those rows. So we take the train and the test. So now we can we can kind of go build our model. So first, this is gonna be important later. We're gonna check 
how many rows there are and how many columns there are. So that's the dimensions. We're also gonna make sure that it all looks good. So yeah, we have our label, we have our variables that were one hot encoded, and then we have our other variables. So let's make the model. So our YOE model, we're gonna wanna take XGBoost. We're gonna wanna say, all right, we want the data to, in the XGBoost model to be train. And we're going to want to say, all right, we're going to take each column. So remember how here we did the row? So that's why we did bracket and then the thing that we wanted before the comma. Here we're going to do just comma because we don't want any rows. We have all the rows we need. 2 to 17. So how did I get these numbers? So label is the first um, the first column. So we don't want to train with that or else it would just use that to, to predict label. But we do want every row from label. And then we want it to get to the last row. And we know from running dim for the dimensions that 17 is the last column. So now we want to do our label. So we do train comma one. How many rounds we want to run it for? So I usually do a thousand, but for quickness today, I'll do a hundred. And then what's our objective? We want our, our squared error to be lowest for a regression model where we're predicting something numeric. If it's if it's training really well and the you know the the uh the squared error is not improving, we can just stop it after three straight rounds of training so that it doesn't train forever. And then these two things, max depth and uh ETA are things that you would tune with um, uh, hyperparameters if we were getting really advanced today. But for now, you can just set it as, you know, kind of 6, 0, 0 0.25. Um, the max depth is how how deep each of the, tr the decision trees will go. And then the ETA is kind of like relating to like the, the training aspect of things. So this is how to make an XG boost model right here. Like this is very powerful. And we're going to be able to see how quickly it runs when we run all that. So this is the tree, the train root mean squared error that's showing up. So we can see that, you know, as it builds each tree, it gets a lot smarter. It was starting, it, its average error was 6.67 at the beginning. And it ended at 5.3. So if we train this, you know, 10,000 times or, or something similar to that, like it could get, it could get really good. It would just be very computationally intuitive for the computer. So let's get our variable importance of this model using VIP. So the expected points on the play is really important for predicting how many yards a running back will end up rushing for. Same with the win probability, the yard line, the defensive yards per carry, time, all that stuff. So that looks pretty good. The best thing I think you can do is you can see some, any of the trees that you want because we just built a hundred decision trees. So you can do XGB, which is for stands for XGBoost, dot plot dot tree. Say what our model is. So our model is our YOE model. And then we can just look at any tree we want just to like see what's, what's up there. So we can see on this tree here, we have to make it bigger. This is how our decision tree works. It'll start, it's, it's probably gonna be hard to see on YouTube, but it starts on the yard line 100. And it says if it's less than 9.5, go down the top side of the tree. If it's greater than 9.5, go down the right side of the tree. And eventually we work our way to these leaves. And so whatever leaf it ends up on will be the value for that particular tree. And then it'll average all the trees together to get an expected rushing yards value. So let's see how our model performed, right? So let's, let's make our predictions. So we're gonna do pred XGB, predict the RYOE model on the test data set. So we're gonna do predict RYOE model. Then we're gonna have to specify where our new data is coming from. So test bracket comma two to 17, which is how many columns there was. So let's see our Y hat. So 
our Y hat is again the predictions. Then the actual Y is the actual test answers, like the labels in the test data set that the, our model doesn't know about. So we do post out resample, which will give us descriptive stats. So our Y hat, which is our actual predictions, and our Y. So our root mean squared error on the test data set was 6.37. The R squared was 0 0.03, which is you know not good, but you know at least it's not zero. Um, and then our mean absolute error was 3.7. So as as you build more in the modeling process and you mess around with max depth and all that stuff, like if you set max depth to 10 here, let's say for example, um, and, and trained it that way, like we can kind of see, but like you, you would want to use an actual hypergrid for this, but for, for today, we're not going to do that. Um, you can see on the trees here when, here when we plot it, that because I set maxed up to 10, uh, the tree becomes a lot deeper. So you barely can see the tree now um, because it, it, it got set to 10. It you know, might have led to uh, some overfitting, basically, is what happened. And like, let's see the prediction. So our R squared dropped down from 0 0.03 to 0 0.015 um, with that. So you know, maybe it's better to have a max depth of four. So you can kind of just keep playing around with this stuff if you want. Um, but there is like a scientific way to do it using a hypergrid that like if anyone texts me, I could I could help with. So yeah, lowering the max depth does seem to be giving us a better um, predictions. So let's uh, let's get predictions off of these and then we'll wrap up. So, so let's create Russian preds. We're going to do as dot data dot frame. So let's make sure we're making a data frame here. We got to do our matrix predict RYOE model as dot matrix rushing model data pipe select label. So we're not going to want to make, you know, we're not going to want our actual label in this. So we're going to deselect label. And then we're going to, um, So I'll show what this looks like. Oops, what did I do? Oh, hold on. Oh, I have to have a pipe here. Oh God. Ah. Uh, there we go. <laughs> so four parentheses on the end here. Um, so our Russian creds, you know, just it, it calls itself V one. Uh, so we want to rename that to expected yards because that's what we're predicting here, right? We're predicting expected yards. So you can use the dplyr rename package and just say, all right, expected yards equals v1. So let's open up brushing preds again and see if it's expected yards now. So now let's get, oh shoot. Now let's get um, the uh, predictions and then we're we're done. So again, we're going to C bind this rushing preds, which is just this, to the, the rushing data join data set that we left above. So C bind rushing preds to rushing data join. So now we can get rushing yards over expected projections, right? So we're going to take the yards per carry, which is the label, and we're going to subtract the, the expected yards from it. So for set here, got two yards when he was expected to get 4.1. So that'd be a negative 2.1 rushing yards over expected there. But so let's see what our leaderboard has been since the 2015 data set that we have here. So we do RYOE projects, mutate equals label, uh, get, get our rushing yards over expected metric. So we can see that there if we just print it out, but like that doesn't tell us anything until we actually get player name. So group by rusher player name, Again, you should probably be, and um, rusher, you could use rusher player ID here. We just didn't include that uh, just in case players have the same name or something. And then let's get how many times they rushed the ball and their total rushing yards over expected. So we have our RYOE, we mutated up there. And then arrange by total rushing yards are expected. So here we go. 
So Nick Chubb has a thousand rushing yards over expected since 2015, followed by Derrick Henry, Aaron Jones, Lamar Jackson, Taysom Hill. This makes a lot of sense. So we we probably did something right here. So that is you know kind of the end of um you know doing the random forest and XG boost. So again to recap, random forest we built a field goal prediction model. XG boost we built a rushing yards over expected. All the code is on GitHub and this will be uploaded to YouTube for those who don't make it. Um, you know, plan going forward here is this was the last tutorial of this semester. You know, to to summarize what we did was introduction to NFL Fast Star, data viz, linear and logistic regression modeling, and then random forest and actually boost. Uh, you know, I'll be switching to Python starting next semester uh, with these types of tutorials. So that will be starting in uh, you know, maybe late late later December or maybe January. But I appreciate everyone listening so far and liking this GitHub. You know, it's been really nice to see that that um, nine people have gotten uh, you know inspiration out of it and everything. But yeah, thanks thanks everyone for coming and um, until next time when we do uh, when when we do Python.